Welcome, young scholars, to AP World History, more affectionately known as WAP. This video will serve as an introduction to AP World History, and the big question you should be able to answer after watching this video is, how is WAP like a Rubik's Cube? So when you think about AP World History, it's really the study of anything and everything that's ever happened in the whole history of human existence. And so that's just an incredible, insane amount of content that you would have to learn. And one of the ways in which you can learn something that's, that's this content heavy is to start to break it down and organize it in your brain, much like you can organize the various colors of a Rubik's Cube. So one way that we break down world history is into different time periods. And the College Board has broken down AP World History into six time periods. Now note, they're all weighted a little bit differently. Period one is 5%, period two is 15%. All the other periods, three through six, are all worth 20%. So WAP is divided into six time periods. This is a, a process known as periodization that historians engage in, where essentially like you're creating a book of human history, of the human story, and you have to identify, all right, this chapter, here's basically what humans were doing. Here are some of the major things that humans were doing in this chapter. And so th those are decisions made by historians about when to make those turning point moments. The College Board has made some of those decisions for us, and we will explore whether or not those are the right place to turn the chapter in the human story or not. So we'll begin the course with period one, the foundations period from 200,000 BCE-ish to 600 BCE. So for the first 190,000 years of human existence, humans lived as hunter-gatherers. They migrated across the various continents, starting in Africa, eventually spreading out to Eurasia, Australia, the Americas. They eventually, about 10,000 years ago, settled down. They started forming sedentary communities as a result of the agricultural revolution or the Neolithic revolution. They're eventually going to create more complex societies that we'll describe as civilizations like ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, the Shang and Zhou dynasties in China, the Indus River Valley civilization, the Olmec and the Shavin in the Americas. And so this transition to farming and eventually civilization is going to occur independently in various places around the world. And that represents, again, 5% of the AP test, period one. Now, period two is known as the classical era. And the fact that the term classical era is used should suggest to you that this is a period where a lot of people around the world kind of look back from our modern perspective kind of longingly at this period. And so we'll talk about how these civilizations are going to eventually expand and become more large and diverse and eventually form empires like the Persian Achaemenid Empire or their great rival, these tiny little Greek city-states that classical ideas are going to emerge out of. Eventually, we'll see the formation of other empires like the Roman Empire, the Qin and Han dynasties in China where government was centralized for the first time in China. We'll talk about during this period the transformation of religious traditions that really began during period one with Hinduism and Judaism in period one, the beginnings of those two religions. We'll talk about the formation of two new religious traditions in this period, Buddhism and Christianity, and how those religions are eventually going to spread along with ideas and people and technologies along these trans-regional trade networks like the Silk Road, the Indian Ocean Sea Lanes, the Trans-Saharan Trade Network, which all are going to form during this classical era. And so that represents about 15% of the AP test. Then we'll move into period three, the age of trans-regional interactions where we're going to see more and more empires rise and fall, uh, more and more ideas spread along these trans-regional trade networks like the Silk Road, the Indian Ocean Sea Lanes, the Trans-Saharan Network. We'll see empires form like the Byzantine Empire and the Sui, Tong, Song, Yuan, and Ming dynasties in China. We'll talk about the rise and fall of the Mongols, and probably most importantly in this period, the formation of the Islamic Caliphates, the Islamic state uh, and the spread of the religion of Islam during period three. We'll talk in the Americas about societies like the Maya and then later the Incan and the Aztec empires. And in Africa, the formation of major kingdoms like Ghana and Mali. And so this age of trans-regional interactions where people are moving across regions and interacting represents 20% of the AP test from 600 CE to 1450 CE.
Then once we reach 1450 CE, we'll start to see increased hemispheric interactions. So the first global age where people are beginning to come together on a worldwide scale. And so during this period, we'll talk about the conquest of the Americas by Europeans, the colonization of the Americas. We'll talk about the formation of other empires like the Safavids, the Mughals, the Ottomans. We'll talk about the beginnings of Russia, the state of Russia. Um, we'll talk about the major transformations that are going to begin to occur in Europe, like the Enlightenment, the Scientific Revolution, the Protestant Reformation, and the Renaissance. So this represents about 20% of the AP test, the first global age. From 1750 to 1900, we'll talk about the Age of Revolutions. And so the major transformation in the Age of Revolutions is the Industrial Revolution, which is going to impact everything on a global scale. But we'll also talk about political revolutions like the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, various Latin American revolutions. We'll talk about how many people responded to the Industrial Revolution, like the Japanese with their... Meiji Restoration or the Ottomans' response to the Industrial Revolution. We'll talk about how Europeans are going to go into Africa and begin to carve up Africa as part of the scramble for Africa and European imperialism in Africa and parts of Asia. So that's the Age of Revolutions, period 5, which represents 20% of the AP test. Finally, we'll talk about our modern era. Um, beginning really with World War I and then World War II, and then we'll see the rise of the ideology of communism and the communist revolutions in both China and the Soviet Union. We'll talk about decolonization in Africa and Asia with movements for independence, like the Indian movement for independence led by Gandhi. We'll talk about contemporary conflicts like in Israel and Palestine. And then finally, we'll conclude with the global era that we live in and some of the transformations that have resulted as a result of technology and innovations in the 20th century. So this is the modern era from 1900 to the present, and it represents 20% of the AP test. We use these eras in order to break down world history into time periods in order to make more sense of the human story. We can also break down world history into various geographic regions. So maybe what you studied when you were younger, there were seven continents, right? North America, South America, Europe, how arbitrary, right? How does Europe become a continent? Um, Africa, Asia, and Australia. Now, you're going to have to sort of forget all of that for the most part when you take AP World History because the divisions that we're going to establish are a little bit different. So we could be talking about the Americas, which we would be referencing both North and South America. Or it, we could break down that further into North America and Latin America. And the division is really the division between modern day the United States and Mexico, right? Any country that speaks a language derived from Latin, like Spanish, is considered part of Latin America. We can divide Latin America even further into Mesoamerica or Middle America here and the Caribbean, these islands out here. So those are the various divisions that you need to be aware of for the Americas in AP World History. Now, Africa, we can divide Africa up into North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, and that's the way it's most commonly seen on the AP test, although they reserve the right to divide up Sub-Saharan Africa even further into West Africa and Central Africa and South Africa and East Africa. Now, notice the one place in, in the sort of the continent of Africa that's not included is Egypt. And that's because Egypt is considered part of the Middle East and part of Asia. So Asia, we can break down into the Middle East. And again, that's a term that we got to be a little bit careful of. So sometimes they refer to this as Southwest Asia because it's really only Middle East of Europe, right? So it's East of Europe and it's in the middle of this big landmass. And so this is really a Eurocentric term, the Middle East. So the Middle East... There's South Asia, which is really the Indian subcontinent here with India and Pakistan and Bangladesh. We have Southeast Asia, East Asia, which is mostly China and Japan and Korea, Central Asia, and then Russia, Siberia. 
So the various ways in which Asia is broken down, and you have to be very careful because if they ask a question about South Asia and you write about Southeast Asia, you get zero points on the AP test. Now Europe can be broken down into Western Europe and Eastern Europe, and that's really going to be important for purpose of the Cold War later on in the class. Oceania, Australia, and also New Guinea here, New Zealand, and the Polynesian Islands out here in the Pacific. We can also break down Europe and Asia, since this is one connected landmass, oftentimes it'll just be referred to as Eurasia. Or if we include Africa, because Africa was connected to Eurasia for most of world history, we'd call that Afro-Eurasia. So those are all the various geographic regions that we'll be referring to throughout the course. So we're going to stop the video there, and we'll pick back up in the next video. Thanks for watching.